What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about Final Destination 6 in this video here again today. We know that recently with Final Destination 6, we've been told it's a reboot by the production designer. But we also know that we're expected expecting to see Tony Todd return to the franchise as well. And we also know that prior to what's been happening, unfortunately, with Hollywood, it was supposed to begin filming in the summer. Uh... Also, I've been making countless videos on Final Destination 6 as early as this, this as earlier in the parts of the year ago. And I dived into what to expect based off of audition tapes. I went over and discussed how they have scrapped the first responders concept. But recently, Bloody Disgusting, I know, put out that that's still what we should expect. Granted, I've also stated that someone I trust who would have better knowledge on this is telling me that's not necessarily accurate. And now Daniel Rickman, who many of you might know, who's a reliable insider and scooper, has put up on their Patreon a scoop on Final Destination Bloodlines, further backing up what I've been talking about when it comes to the plot, the tower collapse, Stephanie, Esther, and the audition tapes that I've been talking about with you guys. They put out this update, and I want to dive into it. They put out an update giving us a log line, talking about when it's going to film, and they give us descriptions of characters. So Final Destination Bloodlines is looking to begin filming in 2024 sometime in Vancouver, and this is the log line for it. Just as she's about to leave home for college, 18-year-old Stephanie, who's been having horrific nightmares about dying in a tower accident in the 1960s, discovers that her dream is actually a premonition that happened to her grandmother esther who thwarted death 50 years ago but is now running out of time stephanie learns that though her grandmother thwarted death until she died in her 80s and death has been going after the would have been victims of that long ago catastrophe killing them off and then going after their children stephanie and her family realize that their bloodline isn't safe from death who will take them violently and gruesomely in order unless someone like stephanie figures out a way to stop it then here's the character breakdowns that we got from uh rickman stephanie lewis she's described as being smart grounded ambitious stephanie is about to leave her working class hometown and head off for university close to her younger brother charlie stephanie feels bad that charlie has been moody and angry at her lately probably because she's going to be leaving him just like their mom did when stephanie learns the truth about the nightmares that have been plaguing her she realizes her grandmother esther was telling them the truth about death coming for the relatives in their bloodline and she decides to do everything in her power to keep her family safe then you have charlie gangly bright charlie is stephanie's younger brother Normally very close to Steph, he's grown moody and angry at her as her departure for college draws near, hating the fact that she's going to be leaving him just like their mom did. When Stephanie discovers the bizarre truth about death coming for their family because their grandmother Esther thwarted it years ago, Charlie thinks the whole thing is nuts, but he has huge huge respect for Stephanie, and as she studies the, the manual their grandmother gave her before she died, Charlie realizes that Stephanie understands what's going on, and eventually he comes to believe it too. Then we have Bobby, huge, good-hearted, and anxious. Bobby is a high school football linebacker and Julia and Derek's brother, Stephanie and Charlie's cousin. Sweet and vulnerable despite not being too bright, Bobby is the only one of the family who's immediately terrified by Stephanie's account of Grandma Esther's story that death is coming or death is going to come after their family in birth order. A frightened Bobby is willing to try anything to thwart death. Then you have Derek, a walking collection of piercings, tattoos, and, and smarm, defined and a bit crude, full of ego, usually seen with a vape pen. Derek is Bobby and Julia's brother, Stephanie and Charlie's cousin. A tattoo and piercing artist, Derek absolutely does not believe cousin Stephanie's story that their family is doomed to be chased by death and killed before their time, and he's gleeful when he appears to prove her wrong by escaping what should have been a fatal situation. Now, see, here's the thing. Notice Derek's Derek's description. What does it bring up that strikes that that stands out to some of you who have been who have been listening to some of my other Founders Nation videos? This individual is a tattoo artist, I guess. So remember, we've heard a tattoo parlor kill is going to go down in this movie. So that's where this becomes a little bit more reliable as well. Then we have Esther, grandmother to Stephanie. Then you have Julia, bougie tomboy 
You know, that's quite literally what it says here. Bougie tomboy, desperately trying to be stylish, snarky. Julia is Bobby and Derek's sister, Stephanie and Charlie's cousin. She doesn't like Stephanie, believing that Stephanie feels she's superior to her cousins and loves to show Stephanie how much better of a role model she is for Charlie. Like the rest of the family, Julia doesn't believe Stephanie's bizarre story of how their grandmother Esther thwarted death 50 years ago and now death is coming after everyone in Esther's bloodline in order. In fact, Julia enjoys seeing Stephanie brought down a peg when her own mother refuses to believe it. Now, this is all very interesting. What's interesting to me the most is the fact that it says they're being they're being taken down in the order of their births. I don't think we've ever had something like that before in the franchise, which would be very unique. Uh, apparently, Esther gave them a guidebook or a notebook as well before she passed away. And then again, the description with um, with the tattoo artist, Derek. The fact that this dude is a tattoo artist, again, backing up what we've heard about the tattoo parlor kill also has me speculating. Well, is he going to escape the tattoo parlor kill? Because if you were listening to that description, it talks about how Derek is going to escape what should have been a fatal situation. That's what I took from the description anyway. All very interesting details here, but it's backing up what I've been talking about with the tower collapse, Esther saving people, her family being in jeopardy, the audition tapes with Stephanie, going over how she has a brother, etc. Now, I was being told that there was a change of writers as well. And what's interesting about that is Daniel Rickman's report doesn't even have the screenwriter that, that was attached to it. I think it was guy Busick who was attached to write this or james vanderbilt one of the two i can't really recall but neither one of their names are here what's here is patrick melton and marcus dunston what's interesting about that is the fact that these are the two writers who wrote the first responder screenplay so if they actually are being credited as writers now what has gone on in between where we were prior to the strikes and now how did this all come to be and why are Patrick and Marcus's names a part of this? Or is it just that they now have, are getting some sort of writing credit because they were they were actually part of the writing process still? We'll just have to wait and see. But that was like the, the most interesting part when it came to the writers, because that seems like an out of left field thing to know. Shouldn't the writers still be the same as what we've been told? But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification. And there is a video in the description. I have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.